Okay, chapter 16 in the 8th scripture, the scripture of breaking. So this must be the uh, scripture, scriptures of the balance that Tobias was talking about. Regarding the disc of the balance and the events that came about when the disc was broken. The scriptures tell us that the disc was kept at the enclave for many thousands of years, safely guarded from any threat by the respect held by every man and woman for the authority of the fathers. But with dissent came disobedience, and disobedience brought immorality, and immorality begat theft. Tyrant soldiers, aided by sentinel traitors, attempted to make away with the disc, but were thwarted by the white of the kin herself, intervening, although forbidden to do so, on behalf of the fathers. The disc was brought safely back to the enclave, but the threat would linger in the minds of the minstrum and the vestrum. So it became that the disc was melted in the forge of the dragon's mouth, shaped into the elements of four magical people, and given to these respective people for safekeeping until such a time when it was decreed that the disc should once more be made whole. One stone, one stone to the gentle souls that sing in the dark and shape the earth between their toes. One stone to the watchers of the woods, the ones who are outside. One stone to the two that make one of air and of sea. And one stone to the keepers of the dark flame, the eternally dark, the mariners. And nine rings were given to the race of... No, oh, sorry, uh, wrong story. <clears throat> when the time comes for the disc to be whole again, one person will make a journey to the four who hold the pieces, and the pieces will be given willingly, because there will be no doubt to the righteousness of this person. Thus ends the story. Well, at least for now. Are you done? Uh, let me take that back for you. Let's try again. Oh. oh, goodness, it's you again. Oh, you gave me such a fright. We're gonna give this guy a heart attack at this rate. Could I see some more books? Oh, certainly. What a silly question. I'm looking for some information, but I'm not sure which book to ask for. No matter. I know a great deal about most of the books in here. What topic intrigues you? I'd like to learn more about dragons, about the dragon kin. Oh, yes, yes. We have some wonderful books on that topic. Stay here. It's a fast-paced library. Not really. <laughs> I did find something of interest. I'll leave it here for you to read. All right, let's learn about dragons. Oh, well, this looks promising. Secrets of the Dry Kin by Minstrom Eliak. Forward. The dry kin are known by many names throughout the twin worlds. In all tongue, they are often referred to as Draken. In some variations of low tongue, Draken. In the Southlands, the word. Let's see if I can get this right. Drakik. Nope. Dragik. Something like that refers specifically to the winged lizard shape traditionally associated with the kin. 
In Irhad, the eternal spirits of the kin are called simply Drak, regardless of their current shape. In Stark, most cultures refer to the kin as dragon. Dra Draj, Drach, Dragone. Though this usually refers only to the winged lizard-like shape and not to the spirit inhabiting this, sh this shape. In fact, while in uh, Arcadi, nope, Arcadi, the kin are respected and revered as eternal spirits with great significance in the balance and the all. In Stark, the kin are mostly creatures of mythology and fairy tales. However, in some Stark legends and scriptures, notably the Christian Bible, the name dragon is associated with the forces of evil, and thus the religious connotations do seem to have carried over in a somewhat distorted form. Who or what are the dry kin? Why not ask, who is the creator, or what is the all? Questions thus asked will remain, in perpetuity, unanswered, for they are in truth unanswerable. To condense all knowledge of the Creator into one answer is futile, as in any attempt to define the All without describing every single element that makes up the All. So also with the dry kin. We cannot answer who is the kin or what is the kin, but we can provide some answers to the simpler questions. The questions that deal with what we see and hear and feel and what we have been told by the kin themselves. Answers that together may give us, if only the faintest hint of the whole truth, then at least some indication of who and what the dry kin are. Born of the emptiness between the stars, reads the eleventh scripture of the balance, the scripture of time, shaped in unison with the all, part of the all, yet outside the all, dry kin, Note the ancient high tongue variation in Drakkin. Why so many variations and interpretations of the Drakkin from culture to culture? The kin have always been shrouded in mystery, and from mystery rises legend and myth. The kin seem content to be seen as nothing but ta tall tales and figments of a bard's fertile imagination. Thus ends the description of the kin. Are you done? Uh, let me take that back for you. And so we will continue our uh, library browsing in the next video.